Hey guys, Adam Trigger here. Wager Talk, another college basketball preview. Today we're talking NC State Wolfpack. Um, and, and I got to introduce my guest, Nick Greeley, Psychic Hoops. Um, first of all, before we get into it, Nick, uh, you know, just tell the, tell the people where they can find you on uh, on Twitter and YouTube. You guys, you can find me on Twitter at Nick Grills, and then we have a page, me and Chris, of Jock Gian on YouTube and on X, and that is under Psychic Hoops, where we're just doing preseason content, bringing in beat writers, talking about every single team, and, and on my Twitter, I'm just breaking down teams and matchups for night one day by day. Yeah, you guys do fantastic work. I got a chance to do your show a couple times last year, had a great time. It's a high-level hoop conversation, and I got to give you your chance to take your victory lap here. Because we went to NC State Virginia Tech last year together at, in Raleigh at PNC Arena. Now I think it's the Lenovo Center. Interesting uh, development for them this year. Uh, I left that game. I then saw NC State play a week later. I didn't think that I thought this team was horrible. I was anti NC State, but it, it, it's worth surrounding yourself with with you know people that that know ball because you and Christian were both like, no, this team can make a run. So just Take your victory lap. Tell me what you saw on them last year. And then, of course, they, they get to the Final Four, and then we'll look at them this year. Yeah, Trig. I mean, we saw them play Virginia Tech on a, on a Saturday at noon, and we both left that game like, oh, my God, like, state is horrible. Like, just doing the dumbest things. And I don't know what when the game was, but they kind of find, they kind of found lightning in the bottle. And, like, this was still not a great team, even in the ACC tournament, even though they won it. Like, they were down in the first game to Louisville by one at halftime. Like, Louisville. And then the next game versus Virginia, McNeely for UVA has a free throw to go up four, ice the game, he misses it, or O'Connell hits the three to send it to OT, and they escape. And that's when I sent out the tweet. I was like, man, this really reminds me of where we stayed from a few years ago. Before you know it, they make it to the Final Four. This is a betting show, and I am so excited that they went 9-1 the last month of the season, and Keats was on his way out the door. Now he's sticking around. I think there's going to be a ton of good spots to fade this team this season. Yeah, we're, we're in lockstep there. I, I am looking high and low at chances to bet against this NC State team this year. Uh, big reason. So I, I think, just go back to last year for a second. I, I think a big reason NC State made the run that they did uh, was they really just embraced letting DJ Burns kind of play on the inside and moving everyone out of his way? Uh, you know, what, once they did that, uh, I just feel like Burns elevated his game and, and he played at such a high level that they were able to just kind of, you know, play with their guards uh, around, you know, kind of around the perimeter, give Burns room to, to do his thing and everything kind of came together. Now, Something Keats, you know, wanted, I guess, coming into this season, obviously DJ Burns moves on. A couple other, you know, their whole backcourt kind of moves on, at least the, the key components, uh, the best players back there in, in Marcel and, and Horn. Um, he was hoping to find another another DJ Burns. He didn't really find it. So, you know, Keats, like you said, he was on his way potentially out the door. He was serious hot seat. Uh, I think the NC State lost their last four games of the regular season, limped into the tournament, would not have made it to the NCAA tournament without winning the ACC tournament, and now he doesn't have DJ Burns. So, what does this team look like this year from a from a you know con like construction standpoint? What do, what can we expect to see on the floor now that Burns has moved on? Yeah, Keith Keith went public. He said an impressor like I went in the portal to find DJ Burns and I didn't find him like. And that was someone who saved his job. I mean, DJ Burns was one of one. There'll never be another DJ Burns at NC State again. And the guy filling in his shoes is a guy from Louisville. <laughs> like, and they have another guy that is going to play big minutes from Louisville. Like, the worst ACC team. Like, and Musselman had L. Ellis come in at Arkansas last year. He, and after the season was over, he was like, yeah, no more guys from Louisville. Like, no more bad culture guys. So, like, <laughs> I don't think it's going to work, man. Like, I'm not a Brandon Huntley Hatfield hater. Like, I liked him at Tennessee, but man, like, I just don't think it's going to work at NC State. They lost um, two really good guards on the last of their team, and, and, and that's what they need. Like, they need the dynamic guards. Um, maybe Dennis Parker steps up. He was a freshman last season, averaged four points. But again, they had a DJ Horn last year, gone. The year before that, they had Tra Tra Quavion Smith. He's gone. Um, so you look for guys. I think maybe a guy, Marcus Hill, he could be a bright spot. Mm -hmm. But he had a 
28% from three last season. And, and, you know, average of 20 in the MAC is cool and all, but, like, the ACC is not the MAC. So I have a lot of question marks on this team, man. Like I said earlier, the run from last season bumped them up. I I mean, I've seen some websites have them, like, top 60, and I, I, I don't agree with that at all, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, listen, this is a, a big ACC 17-team league now. There's a lot of good teams. I, I kind of – I'll be shocked if they make it out of the bottom five. Like, I, I really kind of – that's, like, how low I am on this team coming into this year. Um, you mentioned Marcus Hill. I do I do think he's kind of the key. Like, for, for NC State to have any chance, I feel like he needs to ball out. But you mentioned his three-point shooting percentage under 30%. You know, it, it, is he – he could get to the rim like Bowling Green – he was able to sort of get to the rim and, and kind of score a bunch of different ways. I don't know if I see him being able to do that in ACC play. Like once you get up against some of the front courts he's going to be up against uh, and the athletic defenders in ACC play, it, it's kind of hard to see like him being the guy that's just dumping in 20 a game. I mean, if, if he is, then NC State's probably better off than bottom five. But if he's not, that's kind of my concern here is, you know, looking at the backcourt, guys back from last year, Michael O'Connell, Jaden Taylor, um, Dennis Parker, it, you know, probably all get minutes, but I don't know if, the, if if there's enough scoring there. Now, admittedly, I don't follow the recruiting as much as a lot of other people. I'm doing baseball stuff all summer, and and so some of these new freshmen, it takes me time to to get acclimated with. What do you know about Paul McNeil, Trey Parker, and are either of them like instant sort of pieces for this team? Right. I mean, honestly, Adam. <sighs> People will tell you like freshmen matter so much nowadays, and I don't follow it as closely as as I maybe should. But like when I'm making these spreads and and when I'm making the numbers, unless you're a Cooper Flag, unless you're a VJ Edgecombe, Flory Badu, mm-hmm. like for Kansas, like unless you're a big five star player, man. And with so many older guys now, like these are old guys for NC State. I, I don't picture these freshmen for NC State, like Paul McNeil or, or Parker, really playing big minutes, especially at first when we're betting these games. Um, obviously, they'll play like, you know, against USC upstate when they're by 15, 20, Coastal Carolina. Like, they'll get in the game, of course. But I don't I don't see them being giant X factors. I don't think they have any anybody we need to really look out for right now. Yeah, I, that's kind of where I'm at as far as like freshmen in, in general. I, I sort of, you know, I, I like to kind of just watch them for the first couple games of the season and, and like trust what I see as opposed to, you know, try to apply what they did at high school or AAU. Uh, I just feel like I've had more success doing that. Um, So, yeah, I I mean, I look up and down this roster. There's no Burns, no Marcel, no Horn. And I'm I'm kind of of the thought that I just can't see. I I, I haven't – I don't have Keats highly enough rated as a coach, like in what he's done in previous years, to think that he's going to take this roster. And and no one's expecting him to go back to the Final Four. But – we're sports bettors and you know that last year's run is going to be baked into the number a little bit. I don't think he can overachieve against market expectations with this roster bottom line. Like I'm, I'm willing to like stand on that point right here. And I agree hundred percent with you. Like if you really want to dive into it a little more, like NC state was nine and 11 in ACC play. They weren't even over 500. And you, you, you look and you're like, is it offense? Was it defense? What was it? They weren't good in, in either department. They were 13th overall and, effective field goal percent offensively, and they were 10th overall in adjusted defense. So, like, this team just got hot, and they got hot through DJ Burns, and DJ Burns is not walking through the door again. And like you said, Casey Marcel is not walking through that door again. I mean, I just don't – I don't see how it can work out this season. All right, Nick, let's go to the schedule for a second. As we wrap up, um, I see a lot of potential spots to fade this team. Early on, you have a ton of home games for NC State. I, when I left there last year, I downgraded that venue in in my home field sort of ratings. Um, I I give it the, it's Syracuse-esque in the, in the respect that like, you know, if you've got 19,000 in in that arena, it's pretty, I guess it's a decent, you know, atmosphere, but a lot of times NC State's not pulling 19,000, you know, unless it's Duke, North Carolina, or like a, a big time ACC ranked opponent. So Early in the year, USC Upstate, Presbyterian, Coastal Carolina, Colgate, William & Mary, Ryder, a bunch of mid-majors coming in that I think the market's going to price it as if NC State's going to smash those teams. I'll be looking for basically any redeeming quality in any of those big dogs to, to take a big underdog against NC State. I just think you're going to have a great opportunity to, to take some points in one of those games. Yeah, especially game one when they do the whole like, 
I don't know if they'll do like a ring ceremony for Final Four rings or what, but they'll do a banner ceremony at least. And like, you know, it, like, it's a little bit of a hungover spot, even all these months later, because, you know, it, it just was such a miracle run. I don't love betting big dogs. Like, I'm looking at Presbyterian, Coastal Carolina, around 20 points. I don't trust them. I think the right play is fading, as you say, of course. But I wouldn't mind them blowing those teams out. And I'm sure we'll talk about these teams. Sure. But if you look down a little further down the schedule, they play Purdue and Texas. And uh, the website I use now, right, Torvik has Texas will be a one-point underdog, Purdue, and still be a five-point underdog. Those are both games that I would fade NC State big on. Oh, 100%. So you're you're referencing the Purdue game. That's going to be out in, in San Diego as part of an MTE uh, where they're likely – well, where it's not likely. You know, you know that the next day or in that same sort of, of event, they're going to play either BYU or Ole Miss. So, yeah, like that's something I would absolutely look out for. If NC State – is just boat racing teams like USC Upstate, Presbyterian, which is very possible. Those are like bottom of the, you know, those are low majors, if you will. I don't know if that's a term, but like, you know, I guess one that I could see maybe hanging around is a Colgate just because they're a little bit more experienced and and that's a team that typically wins their league, well coached. That might be one that actually comes in and gives NC State a game. Uh, but yeah, they if they go into that San Diego sort of MTE, even a little bit overrated, Great spot to probably take Purdue. Uh, great spot to potentially take BYU or Ole Miss. And then they come home for that Texas game, which you can just just pray that they're a little bit overvalued coming home and, and maybe you catch Texas at like a pick or something when, when, you, when they just shouldn't be. So I'm with you. I think there's going to be great opportunity to fade this team. And if they do overachieve in the non-conference, I go back to Hill being able to get in the paint against, against ACC size front court. I could totally see this team falling apart at some point in conference play. So I think there's money to be made betting against the Wolfpack this year. You're exactly right. Like, say this team overperforms early on and, and they're covering these upwards versus these low majors, like these sub 300 teams. It's just going to set up better spots when they go out to San Diego, when they come home versus Texas. And and throughout the, the conference, I, I think honestly, I, I don't say it's often, but like, I think you can just fade this team so if you get on the fade bus you can just ride it the whole non or the whole conference season and probably make money at the end of the day you'll probably come out over 500 and come up some some money because i just don't see how they're going to be able to manage to cover numbers and win games with the acc and, and right now look at the schedule there's a lot of fair numbers out there to fade them with yeah so maybe we're just you know making it a different way this year props to you and christian who who were both all over nc state making that run last year all the way to the final four I know you guys cashed a bunch of tickets doing that. Maybe we're just going against NC State this year. I know I certainly will be looking to. Um, Nick, thank you so much again for, for joining. If you like this preview, Nick and I did a preview for West Virginia that's floating out there on the Wager Talk YouTube channel. So like and subscribe, and, and you can check those out all in the same playlist. And then check out Nick Greeley over at Psychic Hoops, uh, at Nick Greels on Twitter. Does excellent work all college basketball season. Um Info that will absolutely help you cash tickets. Follow me on all platforms at Adam Trigger WT. And I've got a great special over at Wager Talk Early Bird special for college basketball uh, using coupon code Trig CBB. That's T R I G C B B. You see it there on your screen. Entire basketball season, probably the lowest rate we'll offer at, at any point in the season. So uh, go check that out. WT.buzz slash AT. And we'll see you next time for some more college basketball previews leading up to tip-off on November 4th.